What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 127 and we start today's episode off with a game here at St James's Park to take on Newcastle United away in the northeast of England and as we're ending September here we're uh, coming, you know, coming to the end of the first month without the transfer window. I've been looking down the list of my players and I've been thinking to be honest I've been debating whether we have a good enough squad here at Spurs to challenge for the title but I've been looking at the squad and I'm genuinely starting to think that we can indeed challenge for a title uh, at the end of the season. I, just, I don't think we're going to be up there for a challenge for the title because the squad is actually really, really decent. You know, we're out the transfer window with no business to be done until January. I still think the squad is really, really decent. I'm so impressed with the business we did do in the summer. Despite spending £90 million, we have got some fantastic players in this team. And I really do feel that top four, yes, is a priority, no doubt about it. But there's no reason why we can't challenge for the title uh, if we are good enough at the end of the season. But uh, anyway, uh, the first chance of today's episode will come straight from kickoff. Some nice passing release Carrasco, but I decided to let fly on the volley first time and it went straight into the gloves of Kivrak but from the kick out by the goalkeeper Corker goes for a header he gets flicked backwards and somehow Labyard is all alone Shah makes a sliding challenge as does Kirikes but neither can stop him and it is put into the back of the net by uh, Labyard so Newcastle won Spurs nil and that was their first attack of the game obviously and it came directly from that goal kick out. Well, not the goal kick, but out of the keeper's hands. The kick from the keeper's hands. I was like, Jesus Christ, how on earth did that happen there? Seriously, that is the danger of playing free at the back. You know, you do get exploited and uh, exposed so many times. But 1-0 to Newcastle. And in the 19th minute, another good chance for them here. Ben Arthur gets past his man and plays it backwards. And eventually Newcastle just keep hold of possession. Labia, the goal scorer, plays it through. Eventually the free ball comes to Jackson Martinez. And it is put into the back of the net by the former Porto striker. And it is Newcastle 2, Spurs nil. So 21 minutes in. And it looked like we would have our first defeat as Spurs manager. As Newcastle have a two-goal cushion. But in the 40th minute here, we have a throw in. And eventually it's given to Ross Barkley. And Barkley strikes it from just outside the area and finds the bottom corner so really really good finish by the former Everton midfielder now I do have him playing as a holding midfielder now I know he's uh, he's best and more effective when pushed up the field a little bit but I think Barkley as a holding midfielder is doing quite well since we put him here for the start of the season and that is a superb strike it really is he curled the ball nicely past Kivrak and into the bottom corner so a good strike by Barkley and it is Newcastle 2 Spurs 1 so back into the game here just before half time that was it for the first half though in the second half he started brightly in the 57th minute Carrasco's three balls towards Lamella he did really well to keep this ball on as he was running out of steam but he kept the ball on here down the uh, left hand side double step over then stops the ball drags it through his legs swings it across towards Nelson Oliveira it's uh, cleared away only as far as Fernando who finds Barkley looking for a second goal of the game but it is just wide of the post by the £17 million pound plus Paulinho man so still 2-1 but uh, from this goal kick in the 61st minute Street gives the ball out wide to Debushi. The uh, French right back then plays the ball infield to Johan Kabai, but he loses out towards Fernando. Fernando sees the runner Nelson Oliveira, picks him out, but his strike is well saved by Kivrak, and Sturridge can't control it. So still Newcastle 2, Spurs 1, as we were looking for that equalising goal. It just wasn't forthcoming, but in the 66th minute, Stephen Corker finds Ross Barkley. Carrasco gives it to Daniel Sturridge. Sturridge is surrounded by four Newcastle men, but he still plays the ball through to Brian Carrasco. Really good chance here. Here, Ronaldo chops past Haidar. He heel to heel flicks around Yanger and Biwa and he finds the back of net with his left foot. What a fantastic finish. Kivrat can't believe it. And it's Newcastle 2, Spurs 2. So from 2 0 down, we level here. We uh, we get the score on level terms here. And it's Carrasco who gets the goal. Both goals are really nice as well. Barkley with a nice strike from range and Carrasco with a couple of skill moves and a decent finish with his weaker foot into the far corner. So lovely finish by Brian Carrasco here. And the, the guy, he really does remind me of Dale Jennings. Anyone who watched me, my. Uh, my last career mode last year he really does remind me of Jennings in the sense that he's so good on cutting onto either foot and he always scores spectacular goals so really good finish by Carrasco there to make the score Newcastle 2 Spurs 2 and that is also how the game finished so uh, pretty pleased with the game really I mean it was a difficult game quite well balanced but even so you know to be 2-0 down with uh, 40 minutes on the clock to be able to equalise uh, score two goals away from home against Newcastle and get a draw as things were looking quite pessimistic and quite uh, bleak for us I was pretty pleased to get the draw you know and we, we stay unbeaten in the league and we're not going to slip up for the first time just yet so I was pleased to get the draw and it uh, would have been nice to win no doubt about it but I think the draw was, was a fair result really but after that we saw Tom Carroll was not happy that he didn't start the game and also we had a training injury and Fernando 
is going to be out for six weeks. So our holding midfielder, uh, who we signed from Sunderland, is going to be out for six weeks. That really does suck. We've got some good options in the CM area, but uh, it still does suck, to be honest. But uh, here's a look at the squad report as we enter October. And uh, as I'm showing this to you guys, I just want to say straight away, I know today's episode is a little bit shorter than usual. I know I tend to make them at least 10 minutes, just over the 10 minute mark sometimes. But today's episode is only nine and a half minutes long. So I do apologize. It's a little bit shorter than usual. Not, not by too much, obviously. Only by like 30 seconds for some of them. But uh, it is a little bit short than usual. I do apologize for that. I've just been very, very busy. And I have been trying to incorporate the My Ultimate Team series on my channel on a more regular basis. So it's been kind of try, try, really, really hard to sort of balance them out together, really, to be honest, and get enough play time and time to edit and so on. So I do apologize. Today's episode is a little bit shorter. But hopefully it shouldn't be too bad for you guys. But anyway, uh, here's a look at the squad report. And as I said at the start of the video, uh, the squad we've got at the moment is quite good. There are still some players I want to shift on. Uh, Kuma Lowe is retiring at the end of the year. Uh, Dawson, of course, I'm not going to let um, let go. Of, I'm not going to uh, tell him to leave. I want to keep him at Spurs even until he retires. But uh, there's a couple of strikes as well, such as Juve and uh, Cameron Lancaster here, who I'd want to sell on in January if we can. And Because uh, they're, they're, they're dead wood. They really are. And I hate to say that, but they're, they're not really providing anything. They'll never get in the squad, even for the the, uh, the midweek games in the Europa League and the Capital One Cup and so on. But, you know, they're basically useless to us, really. They're, they're okay. I, I don't mind them being extra on low wages, but to be honest, they're I'd, I'd rather have the money, if you know what I mean. But uh, anyway, there's a look at the league table. And uh, it's, as I said, it's, it's to be expected, really. We are in the top four as things stand, but we've only played a few games. You can't really judge how the league's going to finish on the first few games. But um, even so, it's, it's nice to be up there. And yeah, I definitely think we can challenge for the title. It's going to be difficult, but I definitely think we can. But uh, we took on Young Boys here in the uh, Europa League group stage in midweek away in Switzerland uh, to take them on. In our first Europa League game we got the win against the Norwegian side. We only just won it by a goal to nil and we also probably should have only had a draw to be honest because they scored in injury time and the goal was chalked off for a foul which I didn't think was a foul. So we came into this game and I was sitting there thinking yeah we should be the favourites even with a weakened side. We rested 10 players only the restarted uh, from the players that started on the weekend but even so I was thinking you know I had that result basically in the back of my mind the, uh, the first game. I had that in the back of my mind knowing that it wasn't going to be a formality for us really and we took on Young Boys but the first chance would actually come to us from kickoff. John Joe Anderson intercepts his man. Townsend plays it back to him. Danny Welbeck then gets clear and plays a great ball over the top towards Connor Wickham but his strike just went wide of the post so we almost took an early lead in this game but unfortunately Wickham was off target but in the 45th minute Leal Guterres finds Alex Pritchard here. He fakes shots for round one. He then plays a great through ball into Connor Wickham. He's bearing down on goal but unfortunately I completely messed up the finish. Didn't know what to do and I finessed it basically straight at the goalkeeper. Made a good save to tip over the bar but even so I should have scored. From the corner Anderson crosses the ball in towards Guterres. It's headed away up in the air. It's eventually cleared away towards Nathaniel Chaloba. Chaloba plays the ball out wide to Alex Pritchard. Pritchard finds Ben Taleb. Ben Taleb, Tim Sherwood's favourite person ever, uh, plays the ball out wide to John Joe Anderson who gets past his man with a nice piece of skill. Got a bit lucky but even so he uh, goes down the left hand side, crosses the ball in and Connor Wickham has a free header but again the goalkeeper makes a very good save and it is still Young boys nil, Spurs nil with 45 minutes on the clock and we came to half time and I was sitting there thinking Jesus you know seriously we've only had a couple of chances but they were very good chances they really were and we should have taken at least one of them and I was fearing that this game would be like the first one we'd, we'd barely get any chances and eventually we may have to root them and in the 59th minute how about this the young boy centre back a falter I think it is just launches the ball forward it comes to Dubai and he just puts the ball past the reese with ease and it is young boys one Spurs nil and out of nothing with their first First chance of the game with our first shot of the game. The Swiss side take the league and we go 1-0 down with an hour play. And I could not believe it. that was such a routine goal there. Route 1 really. And it is 1-0 to the home side. And in the 70th minute, Andros Townsend gets past the man. Rolls it through to Wickham. But again, my finishing is really poor. Should have kept on running. Tried to catch the keeper out there. Messed it up and it was still 1-0. <clears throat> And a few minutes after that, the last chance of the game would fall here as uh, we win the ball with John Joe Anderson, who was playing quite well. Anderson plays a great ball over the top towards Cooley Barley, who gets past the man who got the assist, a falter, goes down the left hand side, swings in across towards Connor Wick, and once again another great chance for the former Sunderland man. But he could only put his head wide, and that is how the game finishes. So for the first time as Spurs manager, we lose. We lose to Young Boys, and this Europa League group, which I thought was going to be very easy for us, has got off to a very, very average or probably even poor start, really. But a 1 0 defense. Feet. not very good and that is bad news for us but as always guys big thank you for watching today's video i really hope you have enjoyed it if you have enjoyed the video please leave a like and i'll see you for the next episode of career mode tomorrow afternoon